Using the old story, the men and women have a war. They decide they can't live together. Every healthy culture has a story a bit like that. So, no, fuck this, we can't do it. We enact that story. The women go to the women's space, the men go to the men's lodge, and we stay there doing our own medicine, our own stories, our own banter, our own deep night, our own talking circles, feeding our own fire over and over and over. A creative crisis that goes on all day and all night, and all day and all night, and all day and all night. For what seems like a hundred years, you can laugh your way through it, you can cry your way through it. Tribal living, ritual living, ceremonial panache, learning how to strut again, how to speak to each other's ancient souls. The ancient soul of woman hasn't been spoken to for a long time. The ancient soul of man, the same way, denigrated and pushed aside and pushed into these jobs, not addressed as the magnificent story of the world that we embody. I mean, the rituals that I've done here have been some of the most beautiful and powerful experiences in my life. I've seen sides to myself that I didn't know existed, and the rituals seem to draw that out of me and a feeling of the magnificence of life and what humans can be capable of. It creates community and a sense of belonging and a sense of connectedness to other people. I think if there could be more of that in daily life society, I don't have the sort of depth of connections with people outside of here that I have here because I haven't done that sort of deep work with them. So we might be good friends, but we've not sort of completely opened ourselves in the way that you know we might have seen each other in ceremony. The beauty of the ritual, that's what struck me on the first one. It's so beautiful, it's such a long, intense ritual and deeply moving. The energy of the room, the atmosphere, the environment, the night of this countryside. The playfulness of the war encourages people to go deeper. It feels like I'm answering a call from inside me, from in my soul. When I stand in ceremony or take part in a ritual, it's honouring a part of me. I'm embodying a female body on my outside, but inside I have that masculinity and I can adopt that. And then as a man, you have masculine on the outside and the feminine within. And I think we're meant to work together in pure harmony and honour each other. An amazing piece of theatre, basically. It's just an exquisite dance between man and woman recognising our masculinity and femininity and honouring our gender opposites. It binds you very tight with the other people in the ceremony. It somehow unites us as being one community, being here for some common purpose and you just feel very close to the other people who you, you do it with. Women are beautiful without having to do anything. The man's beauty came through the work and the effort that went into the ritual, whereas the women are effortlessly beautiful. The monoculture has a monopoly on beauty, it seems. There's images all over the place about how to be the perfect looking woman. One of the many things that I love about being here is that you don't see any of that crap. There aren't even any mirrors here. So when I'm in a city, there's reflections everywhere. Everything's made of glass, there's car windows, and I'm all the time aware of what I look like. It brought me clarity about the connection between men and men, and about men and women. I started to understand a little bit about women and it delighted me. Through doing the rituals I was able to see the power of beauty and magnificence of women in a new way and to, to marvel at that. I know myself much better. I think it's made me less judgmental. When you meet somebody the first time you make those kind of snap judgments about them and then if you do ceremony with them you realise that actually there's, there's so much there under the surface that you wouldn't have known about. And so when I've sort of met people in the outside world I think I'm a little bit more open to not making those snap judgments and I think in terms of relationships that all helps. I'd say that I've learned manliness here. The manliness in men is one of the faces of God and manliness is not something that is particularly encouraged in our society. Being part of the men's lodge at Spirit Horse and meeting with the women's lodge, it's kind of given me permission to display that manliness and to own it. It makes those distinctions clear, like this is how men are and this is how women are, and that's good. It's not like you have to feel guilty about being a man. It's okay to be vulnerable here, you're not being judged. Strength comes out of that. I did become vulnerable and that changed me. I expressed the fears I had in the talking circle and that freed me in many ways. And it also opened the door for other things to happen which changed my life dramatically. For me, less objectification of women and more realisation of the essence of who they truly are and their feminine and how I stand with them. This valley will clear your conscience, especially for people who've been here a long time. We're all family to each other. This is our village and this is our tribe. As I've gone deeper with it, it becomes more an act of honouring life, the land, honouring the trees, my brothers and my sisters here, my friends. Yeah, and just honouring spirit in all of us. If I don't do that work, I feel like I'm ignoring it.
part of who I am, the call of nature around me. I think it's given me that sense of connection to something bigger than me. Awareness comes from doing ceremony ritual. I do get a sense of connection to the physical world, the natural world, and also to the people who came before me, my ancestors, everybody's ancestors, the people who come after me, descendants. The human line flowing down through me to those who come after me, and also sideways to the other person next to me, obviously, but also the tree and the cloud and the starling. Yeah, it's got something to do with realising that we are just this little part in this huge vastness and it sort of puts you in touch with that but not in a way of feeling lonely just feeling like you're actually part of something huge. I mean, Shivam talks quite a lot about that we constantly forget and then we re-remember and re-remember and I think a lot of it is remembering who we are and where we came from and why we're here and that's really powerful and the ceremony gives you tools to do that. It is a beautiful thing and my sense of it the first time was I came away with a profound sense of beauty that can be created from the presence of people really trying hard to give more than usual, give their hearts to the ritual. So I invite you to plunge into ritual with us, men and women. As Gurdjieff said, the further I go in the great work, the more I realize the significance of the roles of men and women. As Rumi said, if you have not lived your life as a lover, do not count your life as lived. On the day of judgment, it will not be counted. <laughs>